Hello and welcome to another edition of American Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Ed Foxworth. We're here on the Detroit Riverfront at the Roberts Riverwalk Hotel, owned by Mr. Michael V. Roberts. We had the great opportunity to talk about the state of black business and get his perspective. Mr. Michael Roberts, how are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Good. Delighted to be with you today. Absolutely, we appreciate it. When we talk with you, what we're trying to find out, if you could, take us a little bit back to St. Louis. Take sure. us to North St. Louis and tell us about that sure. childhood time. Well, absolutely. Uh, well, I was raised by basically middle class parents. My mother was a teacher. Uh, my dad was uh, a postal employee. He rose to be supervision level. I always jokingly tell people we weren't rich, we weren't poor, we just never had any money. <laughs> okay. uh, but we had a very solid uh, uh, family. Uh, I'm, I'm one of four. I'm the oldest of, of four. I have uh, two brothers and a sister. And uh, my brothers are with me in business, as is my sister. My mom still helps uh, where she can uh, in her mid-80s now. And my dad uh, he's just turning uh, 90, and uh, he still comes to the office every day. But we we always ask him, Dad, what, we, what can we pay you? And he said that uh, to his sons, I can't, you can't pay me anything. He said it would affect my government pension. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I encourage people. If anybody has a parent who was, you know, you worked for the government for 39 or 40 years, like my dad, hire him because maybe you could get them for free. Sure. Well, you now you and your brother Stephen have formed the company, the Roberts Company. Yes. Tell us what that's about. Well, back when I came out of law school, I started a company. My brother was going in, interestingly enough, in the very week I graduated from law school, uh, my brother was graduating within a two-week period, and my mother was graduating from college. So it shows that she had tenacity to keep going uh, in light of raising four kids and, and doing everything she had to do to make ends meet. Uh, so I was very pleased with, with, with that moment in time, if you will. But Dad uh, and Mom were, were great people, and they were not business people per se, really. Uh, so right out of law school, I was elected to the uh, Board of Aldermen. It's our city council. Uh, actually, what happened was uh, when many of my friends were moving to the suburbs after law school, I moved two blocks from the projects where I lived for 10 years. Uh, and all four of my kids were born there. Uh, and it was an interesting time because as the elected official there for eight years, uh, I had to deal with all the challenges. At the same time, I was developing uh, businesses. I was developing, uh, buying property, inner city property, uh, much like the property that we see in many of our cities today, especially in Detroit, uh, where it's very opportunistic. Okay. Now, for those of us who had no money during that time, uh, and, and it, since it didn't cost very much money, we could do it. Mm -hmm. And over time, I just grew more real estate then began to diversify more uh, into television and, and radio. I owned uh, ultimately about 15 television stations over the years, uh, one radio station. Uh, I now own shopping centers. Uh, there's 12 hotels in our portfolio, including, of course, the one here in the great city of Detroit that we're sitting in today. Uh, there's a variety of other businesses, about 76 companies in total. We've grown from uh, nothing to where we are. We've taken about three companies public, participated in three public companies over the years. And, um, you know, I, I got to tell you, it's a challenge, but it's something that we as African Americans can uh, rally to. Uh, so, like I said, we didn't really have anything in the beginning other than taking the time to get a good education. Uh, and, 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 and that point is the point that I think most of our entrepreneurs kind of find themselves. What would you say for them is the, mm -hmm. I don't like using the word secret, but what is it? I mean, we, I, we are running around with business cards and no business plan. Yes. We, we don't necessarily put forward the effort to understand the logistics and the, the, the action behind. And I know you're big on the word action. I am. Um, I am. To get to the next level. Well, to your point of action, uh, the title of my book is Action Has No Season. Uh, and in the book, I coined a word, the actionaire. An actionaire is one who takes their dreams, their ideas, their vision, uh, their perspective on things, and they pursue them with courage and confidence and bravado. Uh, the way I look at it is, is very philosophical first, because I think we have to have our, get our minds around certain things. Uh, every day when you wake up, you're given 86,400 seconds. That's 24 hours. And in every moment that you exist, the moment in which you exist, it goes as quickly as you think of it. Sure. 
So therefore, you have to live every moment to its fullest extent. So if you have an idea or a dream, go for it. I ask people frequently, what would your life be like if you could eliminate the fear of failure? And let's break that down. There's two words. Uh, first word, fear. Fear is nothing but a mental construct. It is not of nature. It's not grass growing. It's not the wind blowing. When you were born, you were born perfect. Uh, you had no fear. You've allowed that to be implanted in your mind. So the question is, how do we get it out of our mind? And that's up to the individual to eliminate fear as a mental construct. Second word, failure. I submit to you there's no such thing as failure. Now you may say, well, Michael, what do you mean by that? Sure. <laughs> uh, in those 86,400 seconds, you go through experiences. Now you may go through a relationship, you may go through a business where the outcome isn't as you would have liked. Well, did you gain from that at all? Mm -hmm. Did you learn from that? Those who may be facing divorce or those who may be finding a business that didn't uh, quite make it, you learn from it, you gain from it, you're better for it. It may not be the outcome you wanted, but you did gain from it, therefore you really didn't fail. So therefore, uh, you know, now I'm asking everybody to think about it, if your life uh, was fulfilled with by eliminating the fear of failure, where would you be today in your ideas and your dreams and your aspirations? So in my book, Action Has No Season, you know, I move people to think philosophically first because we have to get that implanted. Too often, you know, we think in metaphors, uh, we think in concepts that people create for us.